Hello everyone, in this week's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to save your default UI settings. So essentially anytime you create a UI, you may want to have some settings or text or values set by default, and you might want to offer a feature to be able to save those and have them appear later. So what I mean by this is with this simple UI here, I can uncheck this box and change the text from say hello to goodbye, and then click on save. Now the next time I run the script, it's going to remember that I unchecked this box here and then I said goodbye. So we're gonna be creating a script very simple like this and learning how we can save data and remember it for later to have default settings like this. And of course with our UI, we can also hit reset. And when we relaunch it, you can see it's back to the default saying true and hello. So today's script is about 50 lines of code. The main concept is gonna be how to store data and then read it later and put it back into the UI. So we're gonna start by creating a new JavaScript file and we need to start by creating our user interface. So I'm gonna create a new window. We're gonna call it main window. And the first parameter is to be a palette or a modeless window. And then we need a name for it. We'll just call this uh, defaults and then we'll have an undefined size. And then for all the groups within the window, we need it to go from top to bottom. So I'm gonna grab my main window and the orientation and set that equal to column, which will go from top to bottom. And then I'm gonna need two groups. The first group, which is gonna go from left to right, is gonna be holding our information that we can check and type in things and then save. And the second group is gonna be our buttons to reset and save those settings. So I'll create two groups, one called group one, and one called group two. Group one, we're gonna set it equal to our main window, and we're gonna add a group, with the undefined size, and we'll call it group one. Then we'll go ahead and grab our group one and set the orientation to row. That way everything goes from left to right. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste this and change the name so it works for group two. So now inside of group one, I'm gonna make a simple checkbox and then a simple edit text for the user to input. So I'll create a checkbox and a variable called edit text. Each of these are going to equal our group one. And inside of our group one, we're gonna add this time a checkbox with the undefined size. And the text next to it can say, just say true. And if they check it, we know they mean to say true. And then for the edit text, we can set that equal to group one as well. We're gonna add an edit text, the undefined size and the text inside of it let's set it to be something random like hello again. Now in group two, we're just gonna create two buttons. One is gonna be our reset button, and one is gonna be our save button. Each of these are equal to our second group where we're adding a button with an undefined size. This one's gonna be called reset. And then if I copy and paste it, call this one save. So now finally to preview this user interface, I'm gonna grab my main window and center it and then I'll grab my main window again and show it on the screen. Now if we run it, you can see we have our window, our checkbox, our text box, and our two buttons. So now what we need to do is go ahead and add the functions to these buttons and then create a text file or any kind of file to hold the information in. So first let's grab our buttons, each one. I'll grab my reset button and I'll say on click. So when we click on it, I wanna do this function or all the code inside of here. Then I'll just copy and paste that and change this to my save button to save some time. And now when we hit the reset button, what do we wanna do? We basically want everything to go back to the way it was by default. So the first thing we need to do then is define what are our defaults. Well, if we think about it, we have two bits of information. We have this checkbox and this edit text box. So the best thing to store this in would be an array. So I'll create a, uh, an array called defaults. And this is gonna store all of our information. Ideally, we'll have two pieces of information in it. The first one is gonna be false or true. And then the second one is gonna be uh, our text inside of uh, our edit text box. But we're not gonna start with these because we're gonna first check, do we have a file with them already? So we're gonna create a variable for what our defaults file will be. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to throw it onto the desktop right here and uh, just call it defaults. So if I grab a variable, call it default file, I'm gonna set it equal to a file object. And inside of a file object, we need to tell it the path where the file is. 
So I'm going to reference my desktop. And because the file doesn't exist, you might be wondering, well, how do we tell it what the file name is? Well, we just type it in. So we say defaults.txt. So even if this doesn't exist, we're still gonna create it. Using the following couple lines of code, we're gonna have an if else statement. We're gonna say if default file that exists. But we wanna say the opposite of that. So we'll start it off with an exclamation mark. This says, if the default file does not exist, basically saying, if on our desktop, there's no file called defaults.txt, run this bit of code. If not, if it does exist, do this. So if it does not exist, we need to basically create the file on the user's computer, and then we need to fill it up with the default values for our UI. So I'm gonna grab my default file. If it doesn't exist, the first thing I wanna do is open it. Uh, the parameter we wanna give for this case is we wanna write. We wanna open it to write stuff inside of it. We don't want to read anything we're looking to write. So then I'll grab my default file dot write and anything we put inside of here, it's gonna write into our file itself. And then lastly, we wanna grab our file again and close it. That way it doesn't stay open and have a bunch of memory leak out. So now what we can do is put what we want to put inside of our, for our checkbox, we need either true or false. Do we want it to be false, not selected by default, or true, selected by default? Let's go ahead and put true. So I'm just gonna type in a string, true. And after that, we need to add a new line we need to go to the next column in the text document. To do this, just type in slash r, and it should look just like that. So we have true, and then whatever we want our default text to be, let's just say tutorial. All right, so now we have no file on our desktop. If we run our script, we should have one. It's now created our defaults file, and if you look, it has our true boolean and our text called tutorial. So now we're successfully creating this file. Uh, that is if it doesn't exist in the first place. If it does exist in the first place, we simply need to grab it and read it. So I'll grab my default file and open it, and this time we're looking to read it. So we're gonna say R. Then we're gonna basically run a loop through our file. We already know how it's set up, so we can use a loop, basically. We're gonna use a while loop, and we're gonna say while default file is at the end of the file. But we again wanna say the inverse or when it's not at the end of the file. This essentially says, while we're not at the end of the file, we're gonna go line by line, and while we're not at the end of it, do something each time, each line we go through basically. So because we know there are two bits of information we're storing, the first time through this while loop, we're gonna see true. The second time through, we're gonna see tutorial. So all we're gonna do is grab our defaults array here, and push whatever we're looking at right now in the file, which we can do by saying default file dot read line. And just for good measure, I'm going to uh, convert it to a string. So now the last thing we can do is now that we have our file set up that has all of our information in it, what we can do is when we create our UI, we can check the values of our defaults array and if it's false, then make sure our checkbox is false. And if it's true, make sure it's true. And then go through and check what the text value is and put it in the text box. So let's do this. We'll grab our checkbox underneath our checkbox. We're gonna say if defaults, which again is our defaults we're getting from our text file. And we're gonna grab the first one, which again is referring to our very first time through, which is true. So we already converted this guy to a string, so we know it's gonna be a string containing true or false. And I'll say, if it's equal to true, then our checkbox that value needs to equal true as well. Of course, we're not gonna use the string because we need an actual bool value. We can say else, set it to false, but in this case, we really don't need to because the default checkbox value is already false. So the only time it needs to be changed is if it needs to be true. And then we'll do the same thing for our edit text box, except this time we don't have to forcefully change anything. All we need to do is grab our edit text variable, grab the text property, and set this equal to defaults one. So now when we run this, you can see when we first launch it, our values are gonna be the same thing as our text file, which is true, and is also has the text called tutorial. 
Now let's add the final functionality to update this text file using a reset button to reset them to the very defaults and a save button to update the text file. So inside of our reset button, all we really need to do is copy and paste this code here. Um, I'll open my default file to write it and then I'm going to write true and tutorial which are my default values that we want to be. And then of course we'll close it. If we say write, it's not going to add this after all the text. It's going to completely overwrite all of the text in the document with this. So that's pretty simple if we want to reset it. And then lastly to save everything, all we need to do is grab our default file and open it. And again, we're going to open it to write. We're going to overwrite everything with some fresh data. And we're also going to have our default file dot close. And in between that, what are we going to write to our file? default file dot write and inside of it again we need our bool value a new line and then our text value so all we need to do to get this is refer to our UI elements we're gonna grab our checkbox dot value and convert it to a string just to make sure that it works inside of our text document and then we're gonna add in quotations to make it a string a new line and then finally we can grab our edit text dot text and this is already in string format so no reason to change it. All right so now we should be able to run this script and go ahead and change the value. We'll set this to false and change the text to say something random like random and we'll click on save. Now if we close it and run it again we have false and our text updated to random. And of course, if we load up that text file again, it's going to have everything updated as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. That's how to save default UI settings and basically have more customization for your users and more of a full program type of feel. Hit the subscribe button and the bell right next to it to be notified of new uploads every Monday and Thursday. And of course, leave a comment if you have any questions or comments on the subjects. Hope you guys enjoyed again. And as always, we'll see you next time.